Hello. In this video, we're going to explore the formal definition of a limit at infinity. The question has two parts. In the first part, we're going to make an educated guess about what the limit at infinity should be. And in the second part, we will formally prove that this is the limit. So let's do the first part. We're going to find what we think this limit as t goes to infinity of v of t should be. We're going to call it L. So to compute this limit, I took the constant factor out the front and I'm left with the limit as t goes to infinity of this, but this is just one minus something that's getting really, really small. So the limit is just 50. At least this is what we think. Now let's formally prove that this is the limit. So now we think the limit at infinity might be 50. In order to prove that, what we actually have to do is use the formal definition of a limit at infinity, which is this definition right here. It says that for any epsilon greater than zero, there is some m epsilon such that for t bigger than m epsilon, then the function is within epsilon of its limit. What does all this mean in terms of perhaps a picture? Well, it looks something like this. I'm going to draw the horizontal asymptote of 50, like that. And my function v of t goes something like this, getting closer and closer to this asymptote, never actually reaching it. So this is the function y equals v of t. And this rough, roughly matches with our intuition about what it means for a function to have a, a limit of infinity. But formally, what it means is this. You take some epsilon greater than zero and you create an epsilon sausage about the limit. So here's my 50 minus epsilon line. Here's my 50 plus epsilon line. Epsilon can be anything, but typically you can think of epsilon as being small. What this is saying is that for any epsilon, there is some point m epsilon on the graph that might be here. m epsilon, such that for all t values bigger than epsilon, m epsilon, so that's all the t values over here, the function is inside the sausage, always inside the sausage. For every value of t, the function get is within this epsilon sausage of its limit. The, the logic here is quite uh, subtle but important. What it's saying is that if you have big enough t, then you're guaranteed to be inside the sausage. So when we come to proving this, we need to make sure that we preserve this logical structure. So now that we've been introduced to the formal definition of a limit at infinity, let's use it to prove that the limit of v of t as t goes to infinity is 50. Formally, I'll remind you, it means that for every epsilon greater than zero, we need to find the m epsilon. So it's a game. You're given some epsilon, maybe you don't exactly know what its value is, your objective is to find the m epsilon. And your m epsilon has to satisfy this condition, that if t is bigger than m epsilon, then v of t is within epsilon of its limit. You play this game like this. Let t be bigger than m epsilon, and we're going to say what m epsilon is. We're going to say, sorry, what m epsilon is, but we don't know that yet. So let's just leave it blank for the moment. Let's just assume that it's, it's big enough. Big enough for what? Well, big enough to satisfy this condition, that if t is bigger than m epsilon, then this thing is going to work. But let's unpack this then. V of t minus 50, well, that's just 50, 1 minus e to the negative t on 5 minus 50. Well, I could simplify this. That's just absolute value negative 50 e to the negative t on 5. And if t is bigger than m epsilon, then this thing here is less than 50 
e to the negative m epsilon on 5. And what I wanted was that this thing would be, this thing here would be less than epsilon. So I'll call this epsilon. And it's this line here that tells me how to choose my m epsilon up here. So I can unpack this and find out what m epsilon is in terms of epsilon. So if I take the 50 over there, I get m epsilon is equal to, let's see, negative 5 natural log of epsilon on 50. And now we've found what m epsilon should be to make this quantity less than epsilon. It should be, and we'll write it up here now because we know what it is, negative 5 ln epsilon on 50. Now let's just pause to see how the logical structure of this argument matches with what we were supposed to do. For any epsilon greater than 0, we were supposed to find the m epsilon. And we did, here. And the nice thing about this logical structure is the m epsilon is front and centre. This m epsilon was supposed to have some properties that if t was bigger than m epsilon, so there we have t bigger than m epsilon, then something was supposed to happen. The function was supposed to be within epsilon of its limit. And here we have the function minus its limit, and we found out that by clever choice of m epsilon, the function is within epsilon of its limit. So we've done this for every possible value of epsilon. Let's just see what happens if we choose, say, epsilon to be equal to 1. So if epsilon is equal to 1, we want to know when is the function within 1 of its limiting value. Well, we just need to know what m epsilon is. So m1 is negative 5 ln of 1 on 50, which is about 19.56. So after, well, for t values bigger than 19.56, the function is within one of 50.